What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about WB Games looking to sell again. And I say again because I do feel like this is a yearly thing. I think that's important to kind of throw out there because, you know, with every year, I think things kind of get worse for WB, right? And you can look at the games department. You can look at the non-games department. They're struggling. They've been struggling for a while, but we've heard rumors God, I want to say 2021, maybe, maybe even 2020, about, you know, could you get rid of some of your game division, right? And this is maybe a little bit different, although I feel like it could go kind of either way, right? You can sell them off entirely, and this, I think the rumor is kind of selling maybe smaller ones, or you could kind of have them invest or, you know, take kind of ownership of the stakes and all that jazz, and maybe a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Tencent, if you want to kind of go wild, uh, they would have the rights to like Harry Potter, you know, Batman, you know, things like that, but you'd only be able to do it through games, right? A couple different ways of it going, but the easiest way would be to just, you know, get rid of a couple of the smaller ones or just some of them in general. The thing is, we've talked about this a lot, right? I cover a ton of WB Games uh, news on the channel. There's not that many studios. Like, you really got maybe six to eight big ones in terms of like the monoliths and the WB Montreal and Rocksteady. You really only have like six or seven or eight of those, right? And then you have a couple smaller ones throughout, but you know what I mean? Like take your pick and, and kind of just go from there. So, all right, well, what do we have? Well, this originally broke, I believe from FT.com financial times. I didn't even know that was a website, but they say here that they might be looking to offload smaller assets. They are considering uh, offers to sell Polish broadcaster TVN or a stake in WB's video games business, which holds valuable intellectual property to Harry Potter games set people familiar with the matter. So, so right there kind of sounds like it's separate, right? Like they'd be looking to sell some small things when it comes to the games. They just might be maybe willing for, you know, a PlayStation to take like a 10% thing, right? Like PlayStation invests in FromSoft and they've invested in a couple other things. Xbox, the same thing. Tencent, uh, Tencent actually invests themselves and in, in kind of takes over quite a bit of things, right? You know, that's something you could do. You would basically be splitting some of like the creative decision making, right? If somebody owns 10, 15, 20, 25% say of something, then then they have a bigger say than if you owned all of it, right? So, you know, it's important to throw it out there. I think it's important to talk about, you know, from like a news perspective. But but again, like this has been something that's happened time and time and time again. It is not, in my opinion, it is not best for like the long-term health of WB Games to do that, do anything in terms of selling or, you know, uh, asking for investment to their own stuff, you know, We've been saying it time and time and time again. It's very simple what they need to do, right? Well, number one, you've got to figure this live service thing out, right? The things that scare me the most with this company is not necessarily what they've done with the suicide squads of the world and things like that, right? Like the past is the past and it should be the past. And you should learn from it and learn to be better, right? The thing that scares me the most with them is their inability to learn when Suicide Squad comes out, they make different excuses, and it doesn't sound like they get the reason why Suicide Squad failed. When Hogwarts Legacy comes out and it does unbelievably well, they take the wrong lessons from it. They say, wow, we made so much money. Wouldn't it be nice if we made that much money all the time, consistently. Well, how do you do that? Well, we do this live service thing. So let's try to sell 20 million copies of the next Hogwarts, but let's try to keep that money flowing every single month. And what do you need to do for something like that? Well, you need to have it be a live service game. Those And those are statements that they've kind of made. They've talked about doubling down with live service. They've talked about the wrong lessons learned from Hogwarts Legacy. They've talked about their lessons that they, they think they had through Hogwarts, and it's not good. That is what scares me the most in this company. You could say selling off these things, hey, you know, you sell them off to somebody and they're the ones making the creative. If they're better at doing it than WB, it might be a win. Again, though, I'm going to default back to what I've said time and time again before PlayStation bought Bungie, before Xbox bought half the industry. I really prefer a lot of these things get left alone. I would not like to see 
three of these studios sold off to Xbox or something like that. I think Xbox is or Microsoft is a rumor that like they're looking. If you remember back in 2021, 2022, I think Rocksteady, NetherRealm, I think those two for sure were rumored to be studios that Microsoft was looking to buy. They might have went in a different direction. You know, you got Activision, Blizzard, and Bethesda, right, kind of in the last three, four years. So things could have changed. But another thing is, yeah, you might be looking at a PlayStation or an Xbox. Maybe they would be better for them. Maybe they wouldn't. I'll tell you somebody who also wouldn't, though, is like a Tencent. You know, I brought them up. You know, uh, thank God Embracer it doesn't know what they're doing and hasn't for a while. And also don't, doesn't have the money to do something like this, right? But you got to be careful of who's buying these things up. And that is something that does scare me. And something, you know, I, I get both sides, right? Because you could say, well, I'm just done with what WB is doing, right? And, and honestly, there needs to be a shakeup. There needs to be some sort of like writing the ship. Because even what I just said, like, I'm not really a fan of where they're going in the future. It feels like they're not learning. They're learning the wrong things. They're not on track. But at the same time, do I really want them to be bought? Because that's its own, you know, separate load of issues. They could potential. I guess it's all potential. But also, they could potentially get it right. That's the other thing. You know what I mean? Like it could go either way. But again, it's important to throw out that this has been a thing. Honestly, at least three times. This is probably at least the third video yearly that I've made talking about these kind of rumors. It always happens. But the thing is, and I, I mean, I think it's important to say, like. For me, it's like where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Like if, if you constantly put it out there that something could happen, one day it very well might happen. Now, might, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to, but it's something that I feel like is in the, the playbook if they want to call it. And again, you look at the economy, you look at some of these businesses, like it's been a tough couple of years. And the reason I say that, right, this rumor now, I feel like, is a little different than this rumor two or three years ago, right? They may be looking at it now and saying, hey, we had this talk three years ago. We were thinking about it, but things were maybe better. We had more of a optimistic outlook for the future. Now it's worse. Now we really, maybe the money is even more strapped right, where they really need cash right now. Maybe they don't have as much confidence in the future for some of these things. You know, a lot of things, I'm just, it could, maybe, if, right, these kind of words, but maybe those things have happened. So, you know, just like always, I feel like you always have to keep your eye on WB games, right? Whether it's for the games themselves, or for some kind of act that they might pull. Um, is it possible that some of these studios sell in, at some point, maybe in the next, like, say, five years? Let's really extend the range, right? I think so. I, I really believe so. But should it? Again, I, I think it kind of depends on who you are. I would, ra I would rather them write the ship then take a risk and a gamble on somebody else buying them. I guess that's kind of how I look at it. But you, you're taking a gamble either way because who's to say they write the ship? So far, that hasn't happened. You have Hogwarts Legacy, and that, that needed to take some sort of support from in-house, and they had to have let them do that. But just some of the stuff that they talk about and they say does not make me feel great for you know the future ideas. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed to the channel. Bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.